enforcement. Just let me get this straight. So your budget's going to be cut by 5% for every year you're imposed. The reason okay. that I find that a relatively unique situation to be in is, as in my last independent commissioner role... How in the realms of combating modern slavery and human trafficking, the conversation between the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee... Dame Diana Johnson and the new anti-slavery commissioner, Eleanor Lyons, reveals a stark reality of challenges and constraints faced in the fight against these heinous crimes. And as they delve into the intricacies of budget allocation, staffing limitations and bureaucratic hurdles, a profound narrative unfolds, shedding light on the complexities inherent in addressing such pervasive issues within society. Right, and I just want to ask you about the budget, because um, the budget that you've got available to you, we, we've got information in 2020-21, so that was for the previous commissioner, yeah. there was a budget of uh, £605,000 for, uh, for, for that year. W what's your budget for, for, for this year or p part year that we're in? So, as I'm coming in to roll halfway, actually yeah. further than halfway through the year, um, a lot of my budget's been reallocated. So as of April next year, my budget for that year will be £500,000 for the year. So less than the Anti-Slavery Commissioner had in 2021? Yes. And why, why have you got less? What, why have you, what, what's been the reason for that? So um, I'm absolutely pushing for more resource and budget because I think it's very important, but I've been told by the Home Office that my budget will be cut every year that I'm in roll. Sorry, it'll be cut every year that you're in roll? Yeah, by 5% every year is what I've been told. Um, and alongside that, Chair, if I may, um, one of the things that I'm finding challenging is also my recruitment um, process is also managed by the Home Office and I need DG sign-off for every role that I want to recruit into the team, with special permission to recruit from outside the Home Office, which again is creating delays in me rebuilding my team and to have it reflect a wide cohort of the sector, charities, law enforcement. Just let me get this straight. So your budget's going to be cut by 5% for every year you're imposed, and you, anyone you appoint has to be from the Home Office, otherwise you need special permission to... Get yes, that to... is right. So I need special permission to be able to um, recruit from wider civil right. service, right. and then if I want to recruit from outside the civil service, right. I need to get special permission to do that. Right. The okay. reason that I find that a relatively unique situation to be in is, as in my last independent commissioner role, um, once the budget was allocated, I was able to recruit whoever I thought I could put the job um, on the website and I think actually that made the rebuilding of the team and it reflecting what I needed a lot easier. Right and how many members of staff do you think you need? Um, I will end up within the current budget with six or seven members of the team. Um, in my previous role um, we ended up with around 30 members of staff Obviously, I will push for as many individuals as I can to rebuild and resource the office. Um, I have done my team building based on the budget that I've been given. And just so I'm clear, the 500,000, is that just for staffing or do you have to pay for office space? And with that, where is your office? So my office at the moment is in Clive House. Um, that £500,000 pays for my salary, my staff salary and office costs. It doesn't pay for the building, um, and I don't have to do that from within the budget, but I do have to find money for laptops and all the other things you would expect for an office, like expenses, travel, anything that the team is doing. And there you have it, folks. The conversation between the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee and the new anti-slavery commissioner, Eleanor Lines, clearly offers us a glimpse into the intricate dynamics of battling modern slavery and human trafficking in today's world. And as we reflect on the challenges outlined in this dialogue, the budget cuts, the recruitment hurdles and the bureaucratic constraints, I suppose, it's evident that the fight against modern slavery is far from straightforward. And yet in the face of adversity, individuals like Commissioner Lyons stand resolute unwavering in their commitment to dismantle the chains of exploitation and restore dignity to the oppressed. But this conversation isn't about policies and budgets, is it? It's about people, clearly, and their countless lives impacted by the scourge of modern slavery whose voices usually go unheard amidst the clamour of bureaucratic discourse, I suppose. 
and it's about acknowledging their struggles, amplifying their stories and advocating for their rights and unwavering determination. It's just a bit of a shame that this extreme Brexit Tory government don't really care about stuff like that. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this conversation? How do you perceive the challenges outlined by Commissioner Lyons and the implications they hold for our society? Do you believe more should be done to support the efforts of those combating modern slavery and human trafficking? If you do, let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.